Hello. Welcome back to the court, the EDI Jester. How are we, good people? Um, yes, Malcolm, our lovely Malcolm Clark of At Twister Films provides us with a wonderful jaunt through a rogue gallery of monstrous people, organisations, really. But we'll have a look and see, shall we? He always does this. Now, Malcolm's on Substack. You can subscribe if you want to. I put the links downstairs, as per usual, in the old doobries. Um, but he comes up with some absolute corkers and he's done it again with a great Twitter thread, which was posted on September the 26th at 2.02 a.m. Malk tends to do, you know, early in the morning, whereas me, I'm in bed then, but I'm up at five, just as Malcolm's going to bed, I imagine. <laughs> well, I hope you're all right, Malk. Thank you very much for this. This is from at Twister Films. And it's about the guilty ones in regards to mermaids. That dreadful charity. And Malcolm begins by telling us the guilty ones. Uh, as we wait to hear what the Charity Commission will do about perhaps the most dangerous charity in history, Mermaids, which promotes child sterilisation, let's look at the, some of those who enabled it. First up, Starbucks, who partnered with Mermaids. Before I continue, please do become a warrior teacher. Come and join us for the November start. And if you can subscribe to my Substack, please do. It's currently on offer. Um, uh, either that, buy me a coffee. The usual stuff, yeah? If you can help out, do. Um, so here, you can see here on the old screenage, one of 15. Going to be a nice thread, this. Nice thread. So we've got Starbucks UK. Um, as Star At Starbucks, writing your name on a cup and calling it out as a symbol of our warm welcome. It's a small gesture, but it's symbolic of what we believe in. Recognition and acceptance, whoever you are or you want to be. We welcome everyone. We're proud to support mermaids a charity supporting young, transgender and diverse people and their families. If you need to speak to someone, you can find their headline. So this is this is Starbucks pushing mermaids, Starbucks UK. Malcolm then goes on. In 2020, Starbucks ran the What's Your Name, a campaign to raise £100,000 for an organisation any court fool could see was dangerous. After all, mermaids was championing puberty blockers, drugs that prevent teens going through puberty. The campaign had films and... We've then got a YouTube video that you can watch, which you'll find interesting. Malcolm continues, there were mermaid cookies. There were, there were the actual mermaid cookies, all part of a relentless promotion of an organization we now know was so careless, careless about safeguarding, it appointed a paedophilia defender as a trustee. This is another thing we know now. Starbucks said it hoped the campaign would drive children to mermaids helpline. It's a shame that the organization has seen over a 600% increase in demand for its helpline service in the past five years, and our support will help grow this service, allowing the charity to employ an additional helpline operator and extend its web, web chat service. So there they are, really giving support to Mermaid, who we now know is under investigation by the charity board. Why are they doing this? I don't get it. Somebody's got a gusset fumbler in the family, or a really confused young girl, one or the other. The helpline Starbucks gave money to now stands accused of advising children to lie to their parents and of promoting chest binders, which can injure girls and reinforce misogyny. Starbucks is so shameless that it hasn't removed Pro Mermaid's content from its website. And that's as of the day that, that Malcolm has begun this tremendous tweet, uh, tweet thread. Um, non-binary always makes me laugh. I, I met a non-binary woman. I've, I'm sure I've told you this, but I'll tell you it again. When I was out on Canal Street having dinner, having a spot of lunch, actually, if it was lunch, having a spot of lunch at Velvet's, which is the place to go, and I'm sat with a few friends, and like I tend to do, I'm old in court. So I'm blah, 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 blah talking rubbish and the usual nonsense you know, that I spout. And she came along with another friend of mine. I didn't know who she was, but she sat down next to me. And she was obviously by me. I thought, God, you know, and she, she didn't speak for a little while. She was only about 19. She didn't speak for a little while. She just watched me like a hawk. It was really odd, as if she'd never seen anything quite like me. You know, um, my mate was grinning from ear to ear because he knew he was causing trouble by bringing her there because she was binding. And I, suddenly I stopped, so I gave pause, which is rare. I gave pause. <laughs> and she leant right in front of me and said, I'm non-binary. <laughs> like that. And you could see everybody around the table just go. <laughs> and I just looked her in the face and said to her, well, that's utterly fascinating. I said, male or female non-binary? And she responded, female. <laughs> Can't make it up, see? Ah, the helpline Starbucks gave money to now stands accused of advising children to lie. So that's 
one of the most important things is that the lion that turned them to bind like this young girl is just out, absolutely shameless. The other partner in the deeply irresponsible What's Your Name campaign was Channel 4, a desperate channel there. They have form, they have form gaslighting British parents. In 2016, they showed Kids on the Edge, which celebrated uncritically the work of the Tavistock Clinic. Who they again, says Mook, because obviously they've gone or they're going. If the Tavistock was closed by the NHS after criticism of its appalling poor safeguarding of troubled children in its care. Do the bozos who made Channel 4 series feel guilty now? Not a bit. Century films are still wallowing in their own complicity. And as you would expect from a documentarian of uh, Malcolm's quality, you've got the links to go and explore there um, from the tweet. The failure, refusal even, to ask questions about mermaids or a medical pathway that robs children of puberty, robs kids of puberty, is exemplified by everyone's favourite know-it-all, Carol Vorderman, I'll have a bee. No, is it her? I'll have a pee, please, Bob. No, that's a different program. What's she on? Oh, that. No, oh, she's on that funny one, isn't she? Where is it called? Countdown. Is it Countdown? Isn't it? Where they give up? They give them a number and they have to get to another number. That was used to do that, didn't she? She's one of the worst. Here she is embracing child sterilization as she discusses the drama of butterflies. Do you see the receipts are there, Carol, my lovely. How you doing? You wibbler. So the receipts are there. When the time comes, and the time will come, there'll be a reckoning. Vorderman can count and spell. What she can't do, it seems, is ask questions of a malign fruitcake like Susie Green, who thought gender GP, struck off for negligence, wasn't gung-ho enough to do child harm. Green would set up her own law-busting clinic. It was ever thus, these people. It wasn't just those on the left who had an intelligence bypass when it came to a charity promoting child castration. The right succumbed too. Thank God for Kemi Badnock. Here we go, Kemi and her opposition to mermaids. But sadly, it's child harm lobbyists penetrated deep into her party. Here's a tiny example of how the look of it to Q plus lobby captured our political class. Paul Church is the chairman of the Conservative Education Society. The, they regularly meet ministers and claim to shape the party's policy. There's just one tiny problem. This is gold, Mulk. This is gold. Paul Church, who also happens to be a director of a PR firm called Connect. I don't suppose you can guess who became one of Connect's clients in 2020. That's right. Mermaids. I wonder whether Church was one of those who handled the Mermaids account. What are the chances? And then you got a picture of Paul Church there with Mermaids by the side. <laughs> Even if Church didn't handle mermaids himself, they were a client of his firm. And it's not as if he was unaware of the effects of giving the impression lobbyists exert political influence. In 2018, he complained his own counsel was doing exactly that. It's the hypocrisy of some of these people. It's just surreal. That's what's, that's what's bringing our care down, isn't it? Hypocrite. Champagne socialist. <laughs> Let's assume Church and other supporters of mermaids within Con's Education Sock, that's the Conservative Educational part, did not exert undue influence on education policy, despite their packed schedule of meetings with policymakers. Must have been tempting, though. Check out their meetings. So you can see, again, Malcolm brings the evidence with him so that you can explore fully what this particular narrative is. And that's the fascinating bit for me. An example of the intimate relationship between lobbyists and ministers is that Hannah Patterson, another Connect employee, went straight from Connect into a senior post in the civil service. I wonder if she also handled the mermaids account. Let's hope not. If this went on under the Tories, what is happening now? The tide may be turning for mermaids, but until Church, Vorderman and other ghouls who advocated on behalf, on its behalf, account for their behaviour, children will remain at risk from the increasingly insidious LGBTQ plus lobby. I, I couldn't say it any better myself, Malcolm. Um, and people are obviously very appreciative below there of what Malcolm's had to say. You can go and read the, the full tweet. It's very interesting. Um, and, you know, there's our Malcolm. OK, so go and have a listen to what Malcolm's got to say. Not listen. Go and have a read of what Malcolm's got to say. And if you'd like to subscribe to Substack, the details are on the Substack. Uh, my Substack in the free section. If you like these videos without adverts on YouTube, you can join my Substack for the moment for two fifty a month. Other than that, great to talk to you. You have a fantastic day. Thank you once again, Malcolm at Twister Film. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.